Um, so yeah, I want to talk about edge computing and, um, you know, the industrial internet, as GE was calling it about 10 years ago, there was all this hype and John Chambers as at the time, CEO of Cisco was like, you know, this is going to become the, you know, the bigger than, you know, the internet as we know it. And it kind of went a bit sleepy over the last few years, but we're seeing a resurgence of, of this notion of edge computing, uh, maybe driven by a lot of the devices we're seeing now, and it's truly taking shape. Uh, but t talk a little bit about, about your view on edge computing. And if you're an enterprise, um, how to approach and, and sort of future-proof yourself in this whole new kind of uh, paradigm, I guess. Well, the first thing I would do is I'd separate edge into um, micro cloud and IoT. Um, so micro cloud is um, small clusters, typically three machines to 20 machines um, that are distributed in the sense that you have many of those clusters. You might have them in the back of a warehouse. You might have them in the back of a, um, a retail facility. You might have them in, on, on a drilling rig. You might have them on a mine, right? Um, but they're a cluster. And so we call them a micro cloud because really the modern way to think about that cluster is it's a cloud, right? Your challenges with micro clouds are first, you, you've got to build and manage them. Uh, uh, each one is pretty simple, but there's lots of them. Um, you can use it like a cloud. In fact, that's, that's, that's what's important, right? You can think of Kubernetes being there. You can think of you know, VMs on demand. You can think of serverless. You know, those are all cloud constructs and you want to have those constructs on a micro cloud. But you do have to bear in mind capacity because it's not you know, AWS you know, US East 2, where you're never going to break it. You know what I mean? No matter what you ask for, you're never going to break it, right? If you've got if you've got seven servers on a drilling rig and you went and asked for the wrong thing there, you'd break it. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd overwhelm it. So you do have to think about capacity. But it's a cloud, so micro clouds. And then IoT, where I would think of, you know, essentially singleton devices. Um, there may be a lot of compute in that singleton device. I'm not talking about a sort of, GPS pet collar tracker. I'm talking about, you know, a, a, maybe a one U server um, or a two U server, but it's a it's a single piece of compute. And there, your challenge is, you know, you've got to be changing the software on that thing every day because we're in a software driven world now, um, and security. But if you break it, there's no backup, right? Unlike a cloud where you can build a fresh one, keep the old one, try the fresh one, and then choose. In, in that IoT world, it's a single point of failure. So when people use the term edge, I find it very misleading, right? If I say micro cloud, then you can immediately picture I've got a certain set of practices that I can draw on. If you think IoT, you're like, okay, I don't have some of those practices. I have to treat it fundamentally differently. Both software defined, both, you know, all the AI you want, all the, you know, modern software practices you want, but I have to think quite differently about those two classes of compute in, in edge. So we have, um, we have two thematic offerings effectively for Edge. One is all about that singleton device. We say, okay, let's take Ubuntu, let's containerize it completely. So the base OS is effectively containerized. And that allows us on that device to say every single thing on that device is a container. The kernel's in a container, the, the OS is in a container, the, um, the apps are all containers. There's nothing on that device literally no file on that device that's not in a container by doing that we can we can get some of the transactional upgrade and hot swap type mechanisms for software updates and, and rollbacks that people love about containers and we can get it on a single device right so that's ubuntu core um, we use um, we can use a combination there of snap containers which are really designed to be bound to the metal like if you think about if you think about um, uh, putting Kubernetes on an edge device, you can't put Kubernetes on Kubernetes, you know, I mean, there's gonna be something there that's at the bottom. So we have a container format, Snap, which is an application container and it's designed for essentially close binding to a device, whether that's a desktop or a, or a little server. Um, and of course you can get Kubernetes there because we can have a Snap of Kubernetes, that's microcates, right? So, the, 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 the IoT half of that story is Ubuntu core with snaps and microcates. So you've got Docker containers there driven by a snap, driven on a containerized Ubuntu core. 
And then the edge cluster, the, the micro cloud story, we address through two um, pieces of software. One is LexD, which is like a very small cloud, right? Single rack VMs and containers. So you have this, this very limited amount of management problem, right? It's, it's literally just install Ubuntu, install LexD and you're done. Um, uh, but you get VMs on demand, you get containers on demand. And microcates there as well gives you Kubernetes clusters on demand with very low kind of admin maintenance effort. So the combination of those two stories gives us essentially um, very clean operations, which is really what matters in this distributed world of edge compute. And it gives us clean operations with very clear primitives for software delivery to the Singleton IoT appliance, right? That's either a snap or a Docker image on microcates or to the micro cloud. Okay, I can deliver VM images. I can deliver container images and I can use Kubernetes, you know, on a cluster, but I don't have a lot of complicated management to do for that cluster effectively. That's interesting. So now, you know, with, with micro clouds, I mean, that's very scary because you know, it was enough to be in a world of three or four major or five major clouds. Now we're going to see all these distributed, forget about distributed applications. I mean, that's a whole different problem, but diff distributed clouds, that means you need distributed storage, distributed network. Um, and, you know, like if you look at uh, the storage industry today, you know, you, your traditional EMC, NetApp, all those guys, you know, they're playing with Kubernetes by saying, okay, we'll adopt the CSI container storage interface driver. And, um, you know, here you go, boom. Um, but that's still, in my personal opinion, it's a nice, it's a nice way, it's a nice progress that mm -hmm. they're, they're playing with Kubernetes and playing at the edge, but it's still lipstick on a pig because it's still the same monolithic storage device. So when you see companies like Maya Data, which are like taking open, open EBS, and they're fundamentally transforming how like, for example, you know, you're, 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 you're taking storage from your, your uh, actual local PV within the machine itself and, and, and clustering all that together and, and so it makes it much more easier at the edge. So, so do you see like a huge innovation opportunity at network at storage level to kind of make micro clouds truly work? Yes and no, <laughs> I mean, yes, in the sense that, okay, we, we have to make that distributed operations world workable. And clearly the stuff we're working with right now wasn't built for that. So there's work to be done, right? So there's. There's, there's innovation to be done, but no, in the sense that in the end, if what you end up with is too many million options of too many different innovations of too many different complexities of too many versions of all of those, well then how do you make it work, right? So we need something at the edge, which is simultaneously very smart and very dumb, right? Smart in the sense that, you know, it, it, it is built brilliantly for those operating conditions done in the sense that, well, you just, you just point the current thing at it and you get the standard thing and it just works, right? If it's too complicated, it becomes too fragmented. You end up with too many little variations of that. It makes it impossible to address as an ecosystem because there is no ecosystem, right? You've got a billion different versions of the same thing, but no one can address them simplistically because there's nothing simplistic to address. It's very fragmented, right? So, much like, much like Kubernetes essentially became a standard for a certain class of problem, I imagine you'll get something similar emerging for, for, for that edge story, right? Because otherwise you, you won't get healthy ecosystems. Um, and we can reason about what that thing will be, right? First, it will be free because otherwise it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult for it to spread and get you know, universally adopted um, uh, or adopted enough to then get, you know, be considered de facto standard. And second, it will be pretty simple. I mean, it, it, it may build on a lot of innovation, but in the end, it'll feel pretty simple um, because otherwise, you know, everybody would do it differently or not many people could do it. Um, and so, yeah, I expect that to be a bit of a bun fight, but um, I expect that, you know, once it's done, it'll be, you know, a bit like take Ubuntu USB stick, install it, you're done. You know what I mean? There used to be a lot of complexity in that. Now we don't think about it. 